you're not an alien, then you'll eat my cookies and tell me you love me. Uh, I mean, them. Okay. Yummers. <laughs> 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 So believe it or not, despite there only being three episodes between now and The Power of Four, we've already got the Return of Bliss episode. Yeah, it's kinda shocking because back when these episodes aired, there was actually a huge gap in new episode premieres as you can see by this list of them right here. So believe me when I say it felt like a much longer gap in between episodes than what it may appear to be. Like The Power of Four special, I made a video on the Return of Bliss giving my initial impressions of the episodes. So, while some may feel this video is a little redundant, once again some of my thoughts have changed on the episode since then, and I have new talking points to bring to the table. Oh, and like The Last Donnycorn, this is another 22 minute special as opposed to being an 11 minute one, so we've got two halves to cover here, hence the longer than usual running time for this review. With that said, let's get to it! <laughs> Another day of cleaning, Mrs. Mop. Oh, them lousy kids make such a mess. It's like this place got hit by a meteor. So the episode begins with the janitor of all people who's bitching about how he hates his job while a meteor lands behind the school in the background. What does it mean? Well, you're gonna have to wait because the episode just cuts to the girl's kitchen where Blossom is baking her brand new chocolate chip cookies using a secret recipe that she came up with all by herself. I don't know why she's been baking cookies at the crack of dawn, but hey! Now that's... Terrible! Oh. It's like I ate a whole bag of sawdust. <coughs> What's in these things? Powdered sadness? Well, considering she used soy mash and chocolate chip flavored soy mash, yeah, basically, she's taking all the fun out of making cookies. Even the professor strolls in only to provide the same response, so clearly something's up with her baking. In busts Bliss, who begs the girls for help in hunting down this evil intergalactic space alien creature known as the Spored. As she explains, he's been running around various planets and destroying their populations via parasitic infection, slowly infesting and corrupting all life. And now he's apparently landed here on Earth near the girls' elemental high school, which has led Bliss to return back home. Did you bring me back anything? Whoa! A wanted poster! It's what I always... Desired. No, this, this isn't for you. Okay, so maybe this is a bit nitpicky of me, and I fully acknowledge that, but the writing in this particular episode seems very off, even for reboot standards. And like, I'm not just talking about one or two bad lines here and there, I'm talking throughout the entire special. There are just so many moments like this where it feels like it should be a joke, but it just doesn't come across that way. I feel like if she just said, it's what I always wanted. It would have been handled much better as a straightforward gag. This line delivery just dangles in the air, like we're led to the top of a roller coaster about to plummet down at high speeds, only to find out that the ride broke down and we have to get off. That pause followed by the word desired just feels like the episode stumbled and didn't know what to say, so it just spoke the first thing that came to mind. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I've been on its tail, a blob tail, and just as I had it cornered, it hightailed it into a meteor that crash landed here on Earth right next to your school. Again, not sure what the stuttering was with this blob tail line. It feels like it might have been going for a joke, but a blob tail is still a tail. What even is a blob tail? It's not like the audience knows what this looks like. Oh, and for the record, it's actually got the stinger of a scorpion, so why couldn't Bliss just call it a scorpion tail? Seriously. But anyways, Bliss continues to describe the situation, explaining that she was in a battle with him when he managed to escape and hightail it out of there, which caused him to land near the school last night. So the girls suggest they head on out to take him down. Bliss, of course, says that it's not that simple because he's an incredibly powerful creature that isn't so easily caught. Sports a hyper adaptoid. <sighs> So it can shapeshift. So he's a shapeshifter and could literally take on the form of anyone. Now, I don't know about you, but if you recall the premise that was released for this episode back before it premiered, it basically spoiled everything that was going to happen in the episode. I'm not going to directly read it aloud, but I did want to acknowledge it because it was a problem I initially found back when Never Been Bliss came out. So despite Bliss stating they can't just walk into school, 
They literally just walk into school, with the professor tagging along because he apparently got a job as a substitute teacher. I don't know why a running theme with these episodes is the professor trying to get a job because the dude is a full-time scientist, but whatever. It never goes anywhere, so like, what's the point? It's more like a convenience thing than anything else. How do we get Buttercup alone to watch her sisters? Oh, the professor has a job interview. How do we get the professor to not notice why Bubbles is acting weird? Oh, he's got a job interview. How do we get the girls to fight Silico? Oh, the professor got a new job at this place. How do we get the professor to go to school? Oh, he got a job as a substitute teacher. It's almost like the show can't be bothered to create and flesh out other new characters, so the professor is just forced into every role imaginable. Well, anyways, the four girls head on over to school, and Bliss gets all nervous because she's never been to school before, so what do her ever so loving sisters do? They abandon her and leave her to fend for herself in a foreign environment where she may not know the difference between the sport and an ordinary human teenager. The girl was isolated on an island for 10 years, stuck around for a few days during the power of four, and then flew into space. She barely has any experience in human society, so how the fuck are her sisters gonna expect her to figure this shit out on her own? They don't even know what they're looking for either. As we'll see momentarily, the sport appears directly in front of them without their knowing, so why on earth did the girls abandon Bliss like this? What logical narrative purpose does this serve? Oh, wait, I know, but I can't say why because we're not there yet, but I will soon. Bliss doesn't even have a class schedule, so like, where is she even supposed to go? You know, as much as I dislike Bliss, I think I dislike the way the girls mistreat her even more because it's completely out of character for them to be acting this way. And need I remind you that when the girls first arrived in this school, they were bullied and picked on by all the other students in their class? Well, guess what happens when Bliss stumbles upon these random teens for the first time? Hello, fellow students. I am Bliss, another student at this Earth. I don't normally reside in outer space. <laughs> no copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! Cool. I love your hair. Killer dress. Let's be friends. See you See later. later. So they immediately love her and want to be friends? What? A few minutes later, she literally bullies one of the kids and the victim uses it as an opportunity to brag that Bliss touched her hand. That's like the complete opposite. Well, despite that, Buttercup's bullying Barry, Blossom forces Jared to eat her food poisoning, and Bubbles pounces on Big Joey. Alien says what? What? Ah! <laughs> yep, I still love that moment at least. Did I mention Blossom poisoned Jared? Because she poisoned Jared, and I'm very happy about that. It makes me feel so cathartic. Then this girl Jennifer walks up and tries one of Blossom's cookies, but she surprisingly likes them, which is super weird considering everyone else has gagged or choked on them so far, although Blossom pays it no mind. And remember how the professor was supposed to be a substitute teacher? Well, he's been off doing this. I know you kids have it rough. Don't think you can succeed. F minus and then some. Just a bunch of flunkies. Word. Um, sir? We're not flunking at all. This is honors chemistry. I think that speaks for itself. Anyways, Bliss happens to come across this trail of slime after bullying this one girl, which leads her to being tackled by this random boy into the janitor's closet. His name is Logan Logan, who claims he's a member of the Universal Protection Bureau, currently in hot pursuit of the sport as well. I don't think it's a spoiler in saying that it's painfully obvious the new character introduced in the same episode where there's a shape-shifting alien going around is the prime suspect for being one in the same. And go figure, that's exactly how it is. Yeah, I'm not gonna act like it's a big surprise that he's the sport or anything, because it's not. We can all see it coming from a mile away, and with a name like Logan Logan? Seriously? Couldn't even come up with a last name, could ya? At least Javier Xavier was pronounced differently. Name's Logan Logan. Universal Protection Bureau. You're lazy! Mada? You heard me. So yeah, remember how I said there's no real logic in the narrative for the girls to be abandoning Bliss? Well, it's because the episode needed a reason for Bliss to be alone with this Logan guy so the two of them could set up this uncomfortable, almost kiss lovey-dovey moment in the closet. Yeah, so, um... Hey! Get out of my closet! This show sucks at romance, man. It really fucking does. 
You know, if the show really wanted to have this moment that badly, the girls could have just split up from Bliss when they saw a trail of alien slime on the floor heading in two different directions. Then it would be much more in character. And do any of these kids ever have class? Apparently not, because it's suddenly lunchtime and Buttercup is practicing her Sherlock Holmes impression as she reflects on their lack of success during the day. Elementary, my dear Bubbles, is the type of school we're in. Holy shit. Wait, did we just get confirmation that this is supposed to be an elementary school? Then why the hell are all these teenagers here? Why are people okay with Bliss? Logan? Both of them are teenagers, like, what are they doing at an elementary school? Furthermore, Blossom's managed to get a bunch more students to enjoy her cookies, which completely dumbfounds Buttercup because they're still just as awful as ever when she tries one again, and in comes the professor who complains he can't relate to these kids in school despite his clumsy lingo and leather suit. Girls, the day when I'm no longer King Cool of Daddio Street is a day that you know something strange is going on. Get off my screen, you satanic unholy being. So the professor socks off to his car and in runs Bliss with Logan to introduce him, followed by a reveal that Jennifer over there was really an alien in disguise the whole time. So the girls spring into action and duke it out with this so-called sport as they fly around each other in an attempt to subdue him. And despite everything else regarding his character in this episode, I do love this gag right here too. Reminds me of the Stan Lee cameo from Amazing Spider-Man 1. After some hit flashes and character stills, Bubbles manages to literally ram right into the alien and knock this larva out of its mouth, allowing Jennifer to turn back to normal as Logan vaporizes it to dust. So long, Spord. You just ate your last cookie. Well, that was a little anticlimactic. All that just for him to go down like that? Well, at least Bliss actually gets hit and saved by someone else rather than being super overpowered. That's good at least. And then we get another uncomfortable moment with Bliss and Logan. <sighs> hey! Get out of my lunchroom! So apparently the school day is over now, despite them just eating lunch? Man, I tell you, this school schedule makes absolutely no sense. Oh, and did I mention that later that night there's going to be the Spring Fling dance event going on? Blossom mentions it briefly when talking about her cookies since that's the whole reason she's making them, but it doesn't really play a role until Logan and Bliss agree to go together here. And thus, part one comes to a close. Thankfully, part two won't take nearly as long to cover because there's far less that happens in it. So it's later that night at the Spring Fling dance and we can clearly see each of the girls performing a specific task rather than just enjoying it for some reason. Blossom selling her cookies as we've established was going to happen, Buttercup's the bouncer, and Bubbles is on trash duty because for some reason she wants to be the janitor even though there's already a janitor. I don't see the logic here. Oh, and the professor is the DJ because we just couldn't get enough of him in the first half. No can do, amiga. While I was rocking out to my sweet jams earlier, it hit me. I know how I can reach these kids. My tunes. Meanwhile, with Bliss and Logan, the two exchange a third awkward conversation with each other as a love song comes on and Logan proceeds to hand her a gift. This golden pendant with a green heart in the middle. Knowing Bliss, she absolutely adores this thing, and the two proceed to go in for a third time, but awkwardly get interrupted when Bliss decides to bail out and instead runs over to get some punch. Meanwhile, once again, Bubbles is seen dumping the trash in a dumpster in the boiler room with a bunch of alien pods surrounding her, which she quickly picks up on and rushes back to let her sisters know. I would be foolish not to mention that this is totally a reference to the Alien franchise here, what with these pods in the boiler room as well as the Spord's overall design. Well, the three of them begin to head back down when they bump into Logan, who also tags along as they head to the basement in order to deduce exactly what's going on. But, in a twist of events that we all saw coming, Logan ends up shooting each of the girls in the back and betraying them in order to keep this infestation a secret. Once again, we return upstairs to the dance where Bliss and the professor exchange a few words until Logan comes rushing in, exclaiming that he has a surprise for her. And with his fancy guitar that magically transforms from his gun, of which nobody questions, he proceeds to sing Bliss a song. 
Did nobody else just see that gun turn into a guitar? But it's not just any song, it's a special song that causes Bliss to become weak and defenseless as she struggles to use her powers, leading to a prime opportunity for the Sport to reveal himself now that his plan has come together. Frenemy anyone? It's also a reference to the Earth Angel scene from Back to the Future. You know that new sound you looking for? Well listen to this! Hey Chuck, you know that new sound you've been looking for? Well this ain't it. He explains that he's been luring Bliss in using that Logan disguise, which wasn't painfully obvious by the way, and slowly infecting all of the students so that his sport army could take over. The girls do end up arriving on the scene because the blast from his gun merely knocked them out for a few minutes, and the sport personally thanks Blossom for her awful baking because those cookies have been the energy source for all of his sport links to take over. Hey, remember when just one of these was a challenge for all four girls to fight? Yeah, neither do I. Sport also just blasts them down in one hit by vomiting up some green goop and that manages to subdue them permanently, so now he turns back to Bliss and vents about how he had actually been tracking her this whole time because she kept wiping out his colonies. Ironic, isn't it? Both of them were hunting each other down at the same time. We are treated to some really interesting and stylized backgrounds that quite frankly I wish appeared in the show more often because it would be super cool to see something like this in motion. You let your human emotions get the best of you. You're No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! No! So here's my issue with this turning point. Why is Bliss strong enough to move the guitar and or what made her strong enough to do it? Like, isn't it a little too convenient that she manages to pull this off despite being cornered in a situation that should otherwise leave her powerless? That's what the entire point of this necklace is. And same with the sports blaster that he uses on the girls. How are we supposed to believe he is as evil as he's claimed to be if all of his methods for subduing the girls barely do anything aside from vomiting on them? It really lessens his image and threatening status. It's also a break in continuity because we never see the sport put the guitar down, and quite frankly, why would he? He's holding it right here in this shot and then suddenly it's conveniently on the floor for Bliss to reach. Why? When did that happen? He ends up calling her worthless when going in for this strike, so like, maybe it was supposed to tie into her feeling human emotions or something, but I don't really see that considering the whole relationship with Logan lasted for literally a day. This is nothing compared to the bond she should have shared with me from The Power of Four, and yet this is the one she seems more upset by. Sure, losing a best friend of 10 years is no big deal, but a boy she's known for like 12 hours? Emotional wreck. This method of freeing Bliss from this situation is honestly such a forced solution that would have been better off with the girl successfully managing to escape again and saving their sister that way. Better yet, have one of the girls zap the pendant using their laser eyes and then have Bliss counter back in time. It's such an easy solution. Either way, she does manage to start fighting Sport. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why I keep switching between the Sport and Sport, the episode does the same so it's never really consistent on which one he's actually supposed to be called. But yeah, she does manage to start flinging Sport around back and forth using her telekinesis and stuffing him inside this jar, leading to the day being saved and allowing the real UPB to come in and pick him up. Coincidentally enough, due to her success in subduing this creature, they actually allow her to join, as she is indicted as a full-time UPB member. Basically, it's just an explanation for why she continues to stay up in space for most of these episodes, although this still won't be the last we see of her. We also learn that she still comes around every so often off screen, such as visiting to have brunch that coming weekend. And that's the end of that. Man, what an episode. At the very least, I can say with utmost certainty that this is better than The Power of Four as a whole from a writing standpoint because it manages to stay self-contained and mostly consistent throughout compared to back when I wasn't quite sure where to place it. Minus the love interest plot, of course, because this show just sucks at those kinds of elements. Seriously, stick to the superhero aspect, please. It's annoying but not surprising that Logan was the alien the whole time because, I mean, when you introduce a new character in the same episode as a shape-shifting villain, it's painfully obvious that they're gonna be the same one. If anything, it's better that this new character is a bait-and-switch and isn't the alien in disguise, seeing as that's the less expected route to take. 
Honestly, the sport just shouldn't have been mentioned to Shapeshift. If it was just said that he could take over the bodies of other living beings just like a parasite, that would have worked perfectly because that's exactly what happens with the Jennifer reveal. That would have looked much more like the real thing because the little maggot that possesses Jennifer isn't shapeshifting. Logan's normal behavior would at least have led the audience astray because he's not acting like a possessed cookie consuming vacuum the way the rest were. Even further, I would have preferred this had Logan been an already established background character just because it'd give one of them a chance to have more personality, kind of like the way Jennifer was handled, because it'd also be a character we've seen before, making them less of a suspect as well. Why not give knockoff Mandark a chance or something? But yeah, that about wraps up my thoughts on Never Been Blissed. Definitely a better episode for the character, still subpar in relation to the trouble with Bubbles, last episode. Also, Bliss never wore her headband once during this entire event, so I guess it didn't mean that much to her after all. She's never been blissed, and hopefully never will. That's all I got.